Hello, this is Dr. Walters, and I would like to welcome you to this brief podcast on sociological theorizing, that is, from theory to theorizing, another thematic thread in our Foundations of Sociological Theory course. A goal of foundations or a goal of sociological theory is learning how to theorize. Sweberg, in his book and many articles, Theorizing in the Social Sciences, argues that great progress has been made in social science research methods. That is, we have, over the past 50 years especially, learned how to articulate, describe, and teach the process of formulating hypotheses and collecting data so as to describe what we call the logico-deductive model or the scientific method. However, less development has been achieved in how we handle theory and theorizing. That is, how we communicate what it is we do when we create a sociological theory. Swigberg notices or notes the central role of the individual in theorizing, the the individual centeredness or grounding of all theory, uh, something he calls personalism, which is quite reminiscent of C. Wright Mills and the sociological imagination known to all sociological students and all sociological professionals. A key distinction made both by Swedberg and by others, is between what Abraham Kaplan would call logic in use or reconstructed logic, what Popper and the logic of scientific discovery distinguish as, as the context of discovery contra the context of justification. The idea here, much as in Kaplan's concept of logic in use, reconstructed logic, is that what we actually do in the process of research of creating a theory, of testing that theory, of collecting data, analyzing data, that's a pretty messy process. But when we report it in reconstructed logic, it sounds like a textbook example, what we read as the stages or steps in the scientific method. But that is really a reconstruction rather than a description of this very, very messy process of actually doing research. The message here is that it's really impossible to study theoretical creativity, which is the place where putting into words that formal theory touches uh, the individual and his or her creative processes. So the scientific enterprise actually involves three phases theorizing, or that is where we begin in that observational way to make connections between phenomena and our social world, where we develop a theory, and then finally where we test that theory systematically with uh, the collection and, and analysis of data. Robert K. Merton is best noted, well, for many things, but Uh, uh, among these for middle-range theories. Middle-range theories, rather than grandiose or grand-scale macro theories about everything in a whole society, Merton focuses on middle-range theories or a set of formulations that can be tested and proven with the collection of data to be true or false. That is, they're testable and they're falsifiable. So for Merton, the term sociological theory refers to logically interconnected sets of propositions from which empirical uniformities can be derived, and these uniformities should be established via empirically testable hypotheses. Theory and justification. So can we produce practical rules to communicate with each other and to students for how to theorize? Perhaps. There are two distinct processes. One, the creativity matters when the theory is being creative. 
scientific logic and methodological rigor matter in the context of justification. These are two very, very different sets of activity, much like the writing process or the painting process where we throw something onto the piece of paper to capture our ideas and then the next phase of it where our critical thinking takes over and we begin to organize what we have put on the piece of paper into a, a logical organization and with, uh, with deep uh, attention and care to the details of punctuation, grammar, and spelling. Empirical data are extremely important in the sociological theory theorizing uh, process, but the relationship between data and theory actually flies in the face of most textbook definitions of the scientific method. Empirical data, according to Swiebberg, and this makes sense, should drive the theory process. It's best to let the empirical data drive the theorizing process rather than the other way around. So according to Durkheim, for example, we move from things to ideas, not from ideas to things. And likewise for Weber, theory follows the facts and not vice versa. It's actually a very tricky and interesting and important epistemological question. Again, two stages for the data. First, we begin to explore the data. That may be through observation and ways we will discuss uh, next week. And then to formulate hypotheses and systematically confront these with data. This means really two studies, a pilot study or a pre-study followed by a main study. So theorizing takes place during the pre-study, that is the place where we observe phenomena in the natural world and begin to think about how different pieces of this experience might be formally related in a causal sequence. That is, we're experiencing and thinking simultaneously, then theorizing during the main study in which we formulate these sort of middle range uh, hypotheses and fundamental theorizing. And here is where we connect back to the main thrust of a course in sociological theory. As sociologists, we inherit a very, very rich, deep, long repertory of sociological theorizing. From that sociological theorizing, we can extrapolate and extract concepts, ideas, relationships between variables that have been explored in the past and use that foundation for our own theorizing about the contemporary world. So the basic steps of theorizing are observation and choosing something to investigate, and this is typically the choice of something that really interests you, then to the, the whole process of naming and formulating central concepts, building out the theory, and then the completion of the tentative theory including uh, an explanation of the phenomena that interest us. So the full research process entails naming, conceptualizing, broadening the concept into a theory, completing the tentative theory through explanations, uh, tapping or drawing together a couple of themes in the course as a theory, globally speaking, women earn less than men, a way that we might uh, put this out as a middle range theory, women have lower levels of education than men, globally speaking. Lower levels of education result in lower paying jobs. Women have lower paying jobs because they have lower levels of education. Again, note that this theory can be tested with data and can be shown to be false. It is falsifiable. This is a, a two by two table, again, a, an important piece of the theorizing process and one that we will explore extensively as you begin to work on uh, essay one and as you begin to connect what you read in the formal theory 
that is part of our rich inheritance with the whole idea or concept of theorizing.